This is the Hawkeye Little Pilot VR FPV headset. And inside the box, we've got a sunshade, instructions in both Chinese and English, dipole antenna, power lead, AV connector, and Velcro for the sunshade. So let's have a look at this thing. Looks like we've got a circular polarized antenna in here as well, and a three point head strap. So it turns out this is an early version of a VR headset by a company called Eximers. They threw in an FPV screen and rebranded it as an FPV product. So let's have a look at the display. It's a 5 inch 800 by 480 display. It has manual channel selection and auto scan, as well as a number of brightness, gamma, and saturation settings. But unfortunately, there is no DVR. So here's where you can tell that this wasn't made for an FPV screen. It's a tight fit and it takes a little bit of work to get it in there. So just be patient with it and try not to break anything. Once you've got a feel for it though, it's not so bad. So here's what it looks like. It's got two mirrors and the bottom mirror flips out like a visor. So you can kind of adjust it according to your eye placement and get it just right. It's pretty clear and really crisp. Nice thing is there's no lens. So you get a pretty nice unobstructed view of the screen. The screen is pretty typical of any other 5 inch display, although it is a lot brighter than the other 5 inches that I have, and there doesn't seem to be any apparent latency. So let's have a look inside this thing. We've got the display connected to the main board with a single ribbon cable. Carefully remove that. Here's the model number for the panel, and here's the main board. So we do have true diversity. There are two receivers here but not much more. Now there is a cutout on the side for a micro SD card, but there is no DVR in here, so don't put a micro SD card in there. So this is held together by a series of clips. There are three on either side and two on the top and two on the bottom. So you gotta be careful if you wanna open it up. Fortunately, I didn't break anything and we got it back together. So this does do video input and video output, but it's a little strange. There are three pins on the top. The middle pin is ground and the left pin is video output and the right pin is video input. There's absolutely no documentation about how to use this, but AV in and AV out both work. So before we get to the flight footage, let's do a couple comparisons. I would say this is most closely related to the FXT Viper, which is another mirror-based FPV headset and uses the same kind of optics. It comes at a premium price compared to the Hawkeye, but it also has a lot more features and it is a much higher quality headset. The display is also removable, and it is also a 5 inch 800 by 480 display. The Viper does a much better job of blocking out the sun, but you can also remove the sunshade, and the experience is very similar to the Hawkeye. So in terms of size and weight, the Viper is much bigger, much heavier, and much more bulky. You can see there's a substantial weight difference, and especially when I remove my battery here. The Hawkeye is only 346 grams compared to the Viper without a battery, which weighs at, at 569 grams. So this is the sunshade that comes with the Hawkeye, but it's pretty useless and I didn't even want to try it out. The screen is bright enough and it works well enough without it. So I think that's probably the primary use case for it. So let's do a side-by-side -side comparison of the displays. Now, one thing I'd like to point out here is that if you power up the Hawkeye before you power up the quad, there will be some video noise in your feed, and the only way to resolve it is to reset the Hawkeye. But after that, it seems to work just fine, so I really don't know what's going on, but it really just doesn't bode too well for the quality of the product. So when you look at the displays side by side, you can see that they're both really similar. I think the Viper might have a little bit more of a matte look to it, so it seems a little more premium but the Hawkeye is much brighter. And if we increase the brightness a little bit more, you can see just how bright it is. I think this is really good because you probably aren't gonna use the sunshade and you're gonna need a nice bright display to see it clearly outside. Now the Viper has a much nicer interface. You can choose your channels on a grid. You can save to favorites. It's got 16943 switching and a DVR. And finally, we've got the Eshin EV800D. This is another five inch 800 by 480 display. But this doesn't use mirrors and uses a more traditional Fresnel lens enclosure. So as far as the interfaces are concerned, 
The Viper has an HDMI input, which is unique to any of these. It has a micro SD card slot and both AV in and AV out plugs, which is very handy. It even has a built-in speaker in the back. The EV800D has AV in, power in for the internal battery, and a micro SD card slot for the DVR. The Hawkeye has AV in and out, a power plug, a fake micro SD card slot, and a joystick. Finally, we've got the EV800D lens enclosure, which snaps onto the front here. And with it, you get a fairly huge field of view. And it is a big headset. It's a little heavy on your head. Definitely not as uh, comfortable as the Hawkeye, but it's a popular one and definitely something that uh, you would want to have a look at if you're considering any one of these three headsets. So let's take a look at some of the footage here. Now this was recorded through the FXT Viper DVR with the video output from the Hawkeye display. Mainly you just want to pay attention to the reception here. I was flying it with the dipole antenna and the circular polarized that came with it. You definitely want to use a patch instead of that dipole to get you better uh, penetration, but um, I thought I'd just use what it came with to see how it performs out of the box. Now for my final thoughts, I think it's a pretty decent headset. The um, enclosure works pretty well and it doesn't strain my eyes too bad. It did give me a little bit of eye strain and maybe a little bit queasy, but I'm really sensitive to these headsets, so take that for what it is. I do like that it uses mirrors because you're not looking through a Fresnel lens, so the image is much more clear. But the mirrors are fingerprint magnets, and you're going to get them all smudged up. So you're going to have to have a cloth handy to wipe them down all the time. The main problems I have with this headset is the lack of a micro SD card slot. There's no DVR, no recording. And my unit had that issue with the FPV feed coming in all fuzzy. So I'm not sure if that's just a problem with my unit or all the units. And finally, the documentation is terrible. They even imply that there's an internal battery. They say to recharge, you plug in via USB, but there's no USB port and there's no internal battery. They also don't tell you how to disable the OSD. You have to press up on the joystick to disable that. And they don't tell you the voltage range. I asked Hawkeye directly on their Facebook page, and they told me that it takes 2S to 6S. So I did try 2S and 4S, and it works just fine. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please subscribe for more FPV-related content, and don't forget to drop a like. Thank you. Bye.